Hello everyone, this is, uh, we're going to be doing the, I'm in the Proverbs series, and we're going to be on chapter 31, it's the last proverb, so this will be the last in this series. Uh, Proverbs 31 is one that I've read different times at funerals, but uh, that's at the end of it, but we're going to, uh, and you can read it, I might not read every verse again, but uh, uh, I'll, I'm going to just pick and choose, I guess. But it says, it, it is, this is verse four and five. It's not for kings, O Lemuel. It's not for kings to drink wine or for princes to drink, for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Uh, sometimes we get weak and we do things that we regret later. Uh, the kind of silly things that we know better. Uh, we walk dangerous paths and I'm not wise enough to know where all of pitfalls are so i need the lord to guide my steps verse 8 and 9 says open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such are appointed to destruction open thy mouth judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy the poor and needy need somebody to plead their cause there's so many people in the world that we can help if we just would look for them we have a an obligation to try to help others and to love them as christ loves us uh, it's a full-time job, but uh, you, you can't find anything more fulfilling. we got thousands of opportunities every year to help different people in different ways, financial, spiritually, mentally, or whatever. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her prize is above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so there shall he shall have no need of, of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. A, a husband will do his wife good. A, a wife will do her husband's good. Uh, how great it is to, to have a wife that you can, that's about all I ever wanted before I knew, started going to church when I was a young boy. We didn't go to church and I wanted that more than anything, it seemed like, uh, to, to have a good home. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth forth her food from afar. She riseth also while it's yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. Um, it, it's very, very good to be married to a, the right mate. Uh, she girdeth her loins with strength, and, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good for good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Uh, in this day and age, there's not everybody is concerned with quality and integrity, and uh, there's a lot of people never give more than they are asked for. They like in Isaiah it said they exact all their labors. They're just going to give you exactly and no more, which you ought to give a man running over his measure. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. Whenever a poor, poor person happened through town, uh, they, they were, I heard of a woman, they said they knew that they could get a meal, a good meal at her house. Uh, small acts of kindness can change people's lives. Wherever I can bring love, I pray that the Lord will help me do that. Help me to see the needs around me and then give me the resources and the desire to be everything that I can. Said she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. Uh, some people concern herself with gadgets and things, but uh, a good wife will make sure that the children have everything and that her husband is taken care of. I know Melinda. She uh, uh, in the ministry. I've had I've had revivals. Uh, I've had funerals, weddings. And she took off. She cleans houses. So whenever I'd have a, a funeral, she might lose a day's pay, which that's okay. But uh, she sacrificed to get to be with me. We can provide many things to many people, but the greatest thing we have to give is our love. Uh, she opened her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. Think about my own mother, the kindest person I've ever met, probably. And uh, imagine the kindest 
woman I've ever seen in my life. Uh, she had kindness. You know, it says the wisdom that comes from above is first pure, peaceful, easy, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy. Uh, when a person's got wisdom, they you don't have to tell people. And, uh, and, and when people come to you, they don't have to worry about and fear that you're going to beat them over the head with anything. They can just, uh, you're easily to be, easy to be entreated. And uh, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Uh, your children are going to pay the same amount of respect as, as you do if, if you're the father. And... Uh, you're teaching them how to do by your wife. If you don't respect her, that's what they're going to think that the rule is. It says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Um, I've seen some good women in my life and uh, my mother and my wife I guess were two of the best that I've ever seen my mother was a, a very good woman she had a hard time when she was growing up uh, when she was four or five years old they lived in town but people had cows somehow or another and her daddy told her to go down and get some milk from a neighbor. And on the way down, she passed another neighbor that had a bulldog. And uh, the little girl called out to her and told her they was having one of them deals about my baddie, daddy's better than your daddy or whatever. And that girl said, well, I'll just sick this bulldog on you. And my mother said, if you do, my daddy will kill it. And she said, get her or whatever. And it chewed uh, the right side of her, her face and it had got down to her neck and her jugular vein when they got it off. They didn't kill the dog. and But anyway, it scarred my mother. Uh, you know, back then they couldn't, their, their sewing up was not like it is now and they wouldn't concern with plastic surgery. They was just trying to get her face back together and she had, I can't remember how many stitches, 100 and something outside and so many a hundred inside or whatever it was. And so it left a big scar. But that was the first memory I ever had of my mother. And I was good with it. I, I loved my mother and it didn't make any difference. I thought her beauty was beyond the facial things anyway. And when I got grown, uh, pretty, you know, had a family of my own. She wanted to go to Birmingham and have some plastic surgery done on it. And she asked all of us kids what we thought about it. And I told her, I said, Mother, you can do that if you want to, but this is the only mother I've ever known, and you don't have to do it for me. And I'd be just mighty glad and pleased if you didn't do it. But she wanted to do it, and they went, and they did some on her face, and um, I, I couldn't tell where. It might have done a little bit, and somebody else that saw it might have said, well, it done a whole lot. But anyway, uh, my mother, I loved her the way she was. She was a kind person. Uh, she was a big supporter. I believe she would have given me the, I've heard people say they'd give them the last bite they had. I believe with all my heart my mother would. I'd go over to her house to visit. After I got married, we didn't have a lot. And she'd say, Dale, before you leave, I want to give you something. And she'd have me a big old bag of cans, you know, groceries and things. And she'd say, I went to so-and-so Kroger or Winn-Dixie or wherever she went, and she said these were two for something. I only need one, and this was so many, and she, she'd have me a bag of groceries, uh, and she was just that way. She was a loving, giving person, and uh, I'll miss her. i miss her. So why you got your mother? Well, if you got a good wife, you better let her know. So um, I love you with all my heart i care about you uh i'm gonna give you my phone number 256-508-4410 if you call me leave me a message so i know who
who you are and what it is I can help you with. I might not call you right away, but I'll call you as soon as I can. And uh, as always, I want to tell you that I didn't do this to replace your minister or you getting a church or anything like that. It's for people I'm just trying to supplement your church and your minister so that maybe you might be in rehab or uh, in the hospital or you're just flat on your back at home or have the coronavirus. And I want to try to help you during these troublesome times of the coronavirus. So until we do this again, may God bless you is my prayer.